Uh, let's talk about this and the other big stories of the day, of course. Paul Conyu, uh, ex-editor at the Sunday Mirror. Uh, and, of course, uh, a book out on General Election 2024, The Message and the Messengers. Have I got that right, Paul? Good afternoon to you. Yeah. You have, you have indeed. It looks at the campaign and, and perhaps even more, the aftermath. And uh, yeah. I've got a feeling that after July the 4th, the bigger political story won't be so much Keir Starmer's uh, uh, first 100 days, but uh, will the Tory party survive mm. or in what shape will it survive? That's going to be a fascinating story. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you've been around the, the, the Fleet Street block for long enough. Uh, you know your way around Parliament as well, Paul. Uh, I, I think you'll probably get what I was saying about, you know, the way we project something onto somebody once they become the leader, it all kind of changes. And you suddenly, you know, realise, oh, OK. So, you know, a lot of people couldn't imagine Keir Starmer as the prime minister. You know, this guy that, you know, stood on picket lines and was, you know, human rights, bit of a lefty lawyer, etc. Or nothing wrong with any of that. But it didn't seem to fit with what many people perceive. But of course, as we've moved through this campaign, and as we get to July the 4th, um, and now he's got a security detail around him as well, because he has to, because he's, you know, equally could have that job. Um, you kind of begin to go, OK, you know, we won't sort of in a year's time, we won't even question that aspect of it, that he, that he looks like a prime minister because he will be the prime minister. The Tories at the moment have got to replay this game again um, of, of looking at all those different who you can imagine being the prime minister and the list they've got at the moment of the hot favourites. Well, half of them, by the looks of things, Paul, won't even have a seat come July the 4th. So they're off the list. No, exactly. Out of, I think, 26 cabinet ministers who are standing in this election, I think uh, 15 or 16 are in real danger of yeah. doing a portillo. Yes. And we all remember that night. What a, what a grim one that was. Well, what was his name? Including, of course, Jer including Jeremy, Jeremy Hunt, of course, who is probably top of the list, but he's yeah. far from alone. Absolutely. I just had a moment of um, the, the Jimmy Goldsmith moment. Was that Miller? Was it David Miller that he was uh, fighting against when um, he, he lost his seat? I think it was David Miller, wasn't it? Do you remember I that? Think, I, think, I, think, I think you're right, but yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put my shirt on it. Though. Yeah. Don't, as don't, a, as don't, a, don't say betting. Of politicians yeah. and bets. Yeah, we can't bet on anything at the moment. Nobody can. It's <laughs> illegal. Uh, Rishi Sunak is warning, Paul, there are 10 days left to stop a Starmer supermajority. I did read some data. I think it was in the Times this morning, which I thought was rather interesting, that of the th of 34,000 swing voter key seats could halve Labour's projected majority. That's how knife-edge elections are, isn't it? That, you know, there is a suggestion everyone's going to go that way, but if 34,000 didn't, it would change things again. Yes, I mean, I haven't I haven't sp spoken to uh, Lord Mandelson lately, although I did have a, I was at a lunch with him back at the end of March, and he was very, he, he claimed it wasn't being ultra-cautious as a, as a tactic, but he was saying that the swing required is so huge and bigger than than the one that he and Blair and Brown achieved in mm. in ninety seven that in fact you know that he he said he'd be happy if Labour had an overall majority in the twenties. Well, wow. of course, according to according to the most of the polls, it could be nearer three hundred. If I was putting money on it, about betting again, I think they will get more than the Blair majority of 79, but I think it'll probably just about creep over the 200 mark. But talks about a 300 plus majority, I think are, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think that, that, that's wrong, although I could easily have to eat my words <laughs> on that. But of course, what, what's interesting about our first past the post system, Paul, is that of course, Starmer could get that and this whacking majority, but could end up with fewer votes than Jeremy Corbyn got, in the same way that yeah, well, Neil, Neil Kinnock got more votes than Blair. No, one of the things we look at in the book is actually that this could be the biggest, wouldn't it, to some polls, you know, the biggest landslide in British political history, but on the lowest percentage turnout, which yeah. I think I think Ill, Ill, illustrates the, uh, if you don't like, the degree of scepticism among the, among the public. And, yep. and I think that um, Michael Gove and Tobias Elwood are quite right from the Tory ranks, the, if you like, the bet gate, to give it the, the inevitable gate tag, is probably more serious in a way than party gate because it's emerging in the middle of an election campaign when the prime minister and the government 
are already on the ropes, and the last thing they needed was a you know was a few more uh, head blows. But I know I know I know lifelong Tory supporter friends. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Labour supporter, but I have like a lot of Tory friends who have said that this is the last straw. We're not going to vote for them, and they either going to stay at home or vote Lib Dem, or even if, in a few cases vote Labour. And I think only in one case that I know vote reform. But in fact, but it just shows that how damaging this one is. And Sunak's handling of it has been disastrous. I mean, what, the word weak was being used by one of one of your earlier callers, and weak is the right word because. He's hiding behind the fig leaf of the gambling commission and, and the delay that means. All he has to do as a prime minister is say to his aides and, and associates in the party, did you place a bet on July the 4th, knowing, knowing that I decided on that surprise date? And if the answer is yes, then if they're on the payroll, they're fired. Yep. And if they're candidates, well, they can't be, dis they can be disowned, although they, of course, can't be stopped at this stage from standing, but, but they can be publicly disowned by the Prime Minister. He's doing none of that. Indeed. Let's have a look at another couple of stories that are around today. Uh, Labour will have to bring back free movement of people if it wants to renegotiate Brexit. I mean, this was about the single market, to be specific. This is Michel Barnier, uh, former head honcho of all things EU related, of course, making that point. Former top official uh, comments come as PM uh, blasted Sakir for never believing in a sovereign Britain. Now, there's obviously some political mischief in some of this, but we know... You know, there is a suspicion around Keir Starmer that he will try to get a, a closer relationship again with the EU. They've been unequivocal. They couldn't say it loud enough. It's in their manifesto. They're not going to rejoin the EU. There's not going to be anything going on. But if they did want to go there, then Barnier is simply saying, you know, you've got to you know, take the rule book with you. You can't just cherry pick this. Well, I'm a, I'm a Remainer, although I have the interesting back, backstory of having been a one of the rare commentators who predicted leave winning the referendum based on my own rough and ready research back in 2016 in the red wall areas i, I thought, thought you were going to say your rough and ready crucial. friends for a second Paul. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a slick um <laughs> opinion poll poll but it turned out to be close to, to, to the result well you know than most of the big polls but I, I i'd say if only i think if keena starmer has any hope of fulfilling his boast that he wants to turbocharge the British economy, mm. the only way, as most economists will argue, the only way he can do that is building bridges back to the EU and ultimately forming, forming some sort of um, entry to the single market and the customs union. The damage it's doing to the British economy you know, is ridiculous, it, it is huge. You know, some figures put it at, at, at 140 billion. Now, now, how, in, a, in, in a sense, I, I'm i a Starmer supporter, but not an uncritical one. And I've had a go at, you know, on air and in, and in print about the fact that everyone, including Starmer, is involved in a conspiracy of silence over Brexit in this, cam in this campaign that because it's, it's not worked properly at all very, in any real sense. And because the public opinion polls show that now, you know, almost double the number of people who support Brexit, you know, um, outnumber those who still support, support having left, that the Tories don't want to talk about it. The Lib Dems still say they want to rejoin the EU, but it's quite buried quite some way down their manifesto sure. and they're not really talking about it very much. And Keir Starmer is, is basically saying no chance of us rejoining the single market or the customs union. And this is odd from a man who must know the economic reality of that. And of course, who was the main cheerleader for a second referendum. So I, I don't mind saying that although I admire Starmer's handling of this campaign largely, the way he's run scared of addressing Brexit, especially in light of the 
opinion polls, I just, I just think is an act of political cowardice. Yeah, although he, he would say, and lots of our listeners will pick up on much of what you've said, Paul, we haven't got time to go into a bigger in-depth issue of Brexit and the, the benefits or the lack of benefits as you've described them. But nonetheless, I think that Starmer would simply say it's the Ming Vars thing, isn't it? You know, why do I want to go there? I'm not going to wobble that thing around on my head with the, uh, the possibility I might drop well, it on Panorama Live. I can see Live. the Ming Vars strategy to an extent, but the but the trouble is, if you're getting to power and, the, and you don't check turbocharge the economy, you're going to drop them in. <laughs> That's true. On, the, uh, on number 10 floor anyway. Indeed. Final story here. John Swinney, uh, SNP leader. In a, It wouldn't be an election if there isn't an ele election expenses row. Did you use government money? Did you use party money? Apparently it's all about stamps. Uh, one of his yeah. staff joked about the stamp fairy helping with the campaign. Swinney said he was confident the public money had not been misused by the party. I think there was as a sending out money mail shots, who paid for the mail shots, the SNP as a party or the Scottish government, i.e. the taxpayer. Uh, so he's been dragged into Stamp Ferry Gate, I think, Paul. Yes, that's, that's what it's been going on, stamp, the Stamp Ferry. It, uh, what, it all, it's being denied by so many. But what it seems to have happened is one of his aides either said seriously or as a joke in a sort of an emoji WhatsApp, I think it was, exchange that, you know, that uh, the, the stamp fairy was helping to send out, in fact, election yeah. material, which, of course, is a breach of electoral law. This, these are the stamp allowances that MPs and the government have to send in Scotland, how to send out information, which, which is not of, an, of a political party nature, but is actually part of the, of the government's public service. Now, the... The Scottish parliamentary watchdog is now investigating this. So, I, but whether we'll find whether we'll find out whether it, it was a fairy story and a joke or it's something very serious, I think I think with that emerges before July the fourth is the interesting question. I suspect it won't. Yeah, we will watch with interest. Listen, Paul, always great to have you on. Gauging your views, uh, former editor over there at the Sunday Mirror and the author of a new book, The Message and the Messengers. Uh, what the general ele general election twenty twenty four, the message and the messengers. Thank you to him.